so that we'll have this. And we're recording. Awesome. So I, we can go ahead and get started um, and respect everybody's time. I really appreciate all of you being here on a Friday afternoon because I know there are other places you want to be that are not on a Zoom call. <laughs> um, especially, hopefully, where y'all are, it's a little bit nicer out here. It's kind of like gray and sad. But I have no doubt that some of you are looking at sunny blue skies and hoping that you could be outside. Um, so as I mentioned, this is the information session for the UNC Wilmington Honors College. Um, and we're gonna basically break down a couple of opportunities that you might have for the Honors College, what the Honors College is all about, some different classes and curriculum stuff. And also at the end, we'll have a question and answer session with a couple of our current students who are um, different uh, majors and, and different levels at UNCW. So you can think about some good questions you might have for somebody who's already a student here, um, whether it's questions about honors or just student life in general at UNCW. And we'll start by introducing ourselves. So my name is Nikki Crucial. I am the student services specialist here at the Honors College at UNCW. So I handle a lot of different things. Admissions is a big one. Thesis projects is one. Doing different student programming events and social events and stuff like that. Um, kind of lots of random stuff. Um, and I also am a graduate of UNCW and of the Honors College. I graduated in May 2019 with Communication Studies and Creative Writing majors. And I love the Honors College so much that I just stuck around and bugged Dr. Bingham until he let me come to work with all of our students. Um, but that's me. Um, Dr. Mel, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, I'm Emma Mel. I'm Associate Director uh, of the Honors College faculty member in the history department. I'm from Spain as well, so willing to practice uh, with anybody. Um, Nikki, I'm still waiting for you on that, on that regard. Uh, I teach, I advise uh, students, and I also do a lot of sort of varied uh, administrative tasks. And I also am trying to go abroad with the students to Spain, hopefully this December, and maybe with some of you if you decide to take my honors class. Um, Dr. Bingham or Kelly? I defer to Kelly. All right. Hi, I'm Kelly. Um, I'm a current student at UNCW. Um, so I'm currently a senior. Sorry, I'm double booked for a Zoom meeting right now. So I am waiting on the other one to start. So I'm going to have them not talk in y'all's ear while I'm also talking. Um, so I'm a uh, double major in anthropology and history. I know I saw somebody was interested in history in the chat. So if you have any questions specifically about that, definitely let me know. Um, and, um, I am in the honors college. I've been in the honors college since my freshman year. Uh, I've lived in honors housing. I've been an honors mentor twice. I started a position, um, kind of created a new position collaboratively, co collaboratively, um, with the honors team. Um, and then I'm also working on a thesis. So I've kind of been there, done it all. So if you have questions about any of it, definitely just let me know. Feel free to ask me at the end. Um, yeah. And I'll probably pop my camera off so I can run to that meeting for the next 10 minutes and then run back in here. <laughs> and I think we had Kat join us. Okay. I'm here. I'm a little bit late. I just <laughs> got off of work. But hi, I'm Kat. I'm a sophomore um, in the Honors College. I am studying public health and I actually am about to declare a double major in Spanish. So Lord help me. But um, I'm studying um, preclinical as my concentration. So like pre-med kind of stuff um, in hopes of going to medical school after I graduate. Um, I'm in the Honors, Honors Fellows Program with um, Nikki and Kelly and Dr. Bingham and um, Dr. Mel as well. And I also, um, I completed an internship with Dr. Bingham last semester. Um, we were working to put together little um, sessions to talk about like different things that surround coronavirus, which was really cool. Um, and currently I'm working on an internship with my public health advisor where we are doing a comparative analysis of traffic laws in Uganda, which is like super random, but actually super interesting. Um, and I'm involved with some clubs on campus. We're not doing too much this year just because of COVID, but they're still super fun to be a part of. And yeah. Awesome. Any more students, Nikki, current students? Uh, Chris is going to be joining us a little bit later, so we'll have him introduce himself before the Q&A, probably. Okay. Uh, all right, I'll go last. Uh, I'm Sean Bingham. I'm the Director of Honors, which is the best job on campus. Um, 
I am also a faculty member in the sociology department. And uh, just to give you an idea for what I do today alone, I met with a faculty member who wants to team teach a class on food and chemistry, um, which sounds amazing. You'll get to cook food in that class. Um, Dr. Mel and I met in person with a prospective family who was visiting from Houston. Uh, and then I just got off a phone call a little while ago with um, a faculty member who runs the gerontology department. We we're talking about a direct admit program uh, potentially into a, into a master's degree. And so um, it's, it's a fantastic job to be able to work with students like you all uh, who are already very motivated, very humbling. Uh, so you'll hear more about that in a little while. Anything else, Nikki, before we jump in? Just some housekeeping things. Um, Y'all are already doing great, but if you could keep your microphones off um, until we get to the Q&A, that would be great, just to make sure that we don't have competing background noise. Um, we are recording this, so we'll have it available as a recording if you wanna look into it later. And you can feel free to put any questions in the chat throughout the presentation, but we'll have a dedicated time toward the end for different questions. But with that, I think that we are good to go. Awesome. Okay. Um, a few things uh, before we jump in. Uh, one is put aside any sort of uh, predisposed views you have of honors uh, and the experiences you might have had with honors um, in a, at a high school level. Not that those aren't great programs, but a lot of times honors programs gain a reputation. And um, I think hopefully the folks here, and you'll see this from meeting them, um, this is an incredibly accessible and supportive environment. And we really, I'm, I'm a cultural sociologist, so I'm very interested in culture and building a culture that's um, very accepting and supportive. And um, I can't say that I do that alone. I think the students are absolutely essential to build that. So this is not a hyper competitive step on each other's shoulders kind of a place um, these students are very competitive with themselves and they push themselves, but they are incredibly supportive of each other. Uh, and so that's one thing I want you to know from the beginning. The other thing is, while we want you to do very well and, and spend a lot of time studying, we do not want you to spend 16 hours a day in the library. We want you to be doing internships. We want you to be involved across campus and in the community. We want you to study abroad or study domestically um, outside of the area. And so we really want you to, to broaden what you're doing beyond just hitting the books very hard. Um, and so you're gonna hear from students that are doing that. Uh, there are some students in honors that I'm not sure when they sleep because they're doing 15 different things. And so part of what we try to do informally in honors is to teach students to say no, to sort of pull on the reins and rather than pick 20 things, that they spread themselves widely across, maybe pick five and, and go more deep there. So um, you're gonna see some visuals on this. This is not just all about academic work. There's a whole series of co-curricular work that goes along with it. And so the honors experience is, is more than just the classroom is, is my main message. All right, next slide, please, thanks. So I'm not gonna go through all these, but I'll focus on a few. Um, really the aim here is to create a small college experience on a medium-sized campus. So you have all the resources of a campus of 18,000 students, but you get classes in honors capped at 20. Um, and what that means is um, you can do a lot of things in a class of 20 or less. I'm teaching a class of 14 right now, actually at the local museum. Um, that's compare that to where I used to teach down in Tampa, where I had 250 to 300 students in a class. You really can do a lot of different kinds of things Dr. Mel is gonna talk in a little while about what that looks like um, and what you can do in a smaller class versus a larger class. We also want our students to move beyond their major and you're gonna hear from students that are able to talk about this. Um, your major is absolutely important and we want you to do well in it and wanna support you in that. But we also want you to be able to connect your major to other things and be able to talk to people who don't have the technical background that you're gonna have through your major about the importance of that major. So for those of you who want to study marine biology, if you're looking at water quality, for example, can you talk to the, the general public who has no science background about the importance of that? If you want to be an engineer um, and you want to design something, do you understand psychology? Those of you who want to be a nurse or go to med school, can you understand the patient experience beyond just the biology? 
Um, if you want to be a teacher, you know, what are your communication skills? So that's really at the heart of what we want to do is, is to develop you as interdisciplinary thinkers. Um, we get you engaged in some form of research or creative scholarship, and we'll talk about what that looks like. Um, and we create an immediate community. So not only do you live in a, a residence hall your freshman year with other honors students, um, but also we, when it's not a pandemic, we create a lot of various community activities uh, to get you engaged with, with the honors experience outside the classroom. All right, so uh, I can spend all a long period of time talking uh, about this, but it's better for you to hear it from an actual student uh, who has recently graduated. Um, this is Savannah, and I'll talk, I'll give you a little um, background on her after, after uh, you watch. My name is Savannah Miller. I am a senior, so I'm graduating in May 2020. I'm double majoring in biology and public health studies and minoring in Spanish. I am very passionate about the concept of One Health, which is the interconnectedness of animal, human, and ecosystem health. And so I'm really interested in gaining more research experience in that world. And so I wanted to pick a project that would be based on One Health. So not only looking at problems with the environment or problems with marine animals or just humans, but all of it intertwined and combined. And so this project focused on native Alaskan health. So it was kind of a really cool combination of all of it. And I got to study every single aspect of it. I went to Sitka, Alaska. It's in the southeast region, so it's really honestly more of like Canada because it's right next to Canada. And so it's a long strip of islands. My island only had about 14 miles of roads, so I was kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Most of the day I would do data analysis, so I would go on my computer and work with Excel and Google spreadsheets as well as an online database that my lab puts all of the information onto, and I would help shuck the shellfish, I would help blend them, making like oyster and clam smoothies, it was kind of gross, but it was really fun, and then we would treat them with chemicals and then test them for neurotoxins, which is what my project focused on, was testing these shellfish for these neurotoxins that can cause paralysis in humans that eat that shellfish. And so it was really cool to actually do the testing of the shellfish and then work with the data to actually look to see, okay, is this an unsafe level? Are we seeing any trends? that kind of thing. I really enjoyed being able to apply what I've been learning in my academic courses to actual real life. Going and actually doing real research with a research group of people who have their masters and PhDs and do this for a living and realizing that not only am I using certain aspects of one course, but it's a combination of all the courses I've been learning. So I got to utilize things I learned from all of my chemistry courses, my biology courses to understand how shellfish might bioaccumulate toxins, also from different ethics and sociology courses, because you can't just tell a native Alaskan community, hey, stop eating your traditional food, shellfish. And so being able to integrate everything that I've learned so far in school all in one project was, was really cool because it, it kind of shows you how your studies can pay off. And so I think having this experience really helped me realize how much more out there that needs to be done and how important it is to ex have those experiences and bring back that information to raise awareness in other places. And that's what I'm hoping to do with, with the experience I had this summer. I'm doing my honors thesis on this project and I'm gonna go present this research at a conference in New Orleans. And so I think it's really important to educate ourselves on that, to see what the next steps are in, in our little human world when really we're just one species amongst thousands, probably millions. And I just find it fascinating to learn new things. I love being a learner and I'm excited to see where I go. <laughs> All right, so um, you're thinking probably where did she go? Uh, she is currently, Savannah is currently at Emory University in a master's in public health program. Um, we spoke about two weeks ago. She was on the med school track and, um, uh, by the way, spoke, I think, very elo eloquently there about the combo of disciplines that she used in the midst of this experience, um, chemistry, biology, sociology, other things. Um, Still thinking about med school, but also uh, in true Savannah form, thinking about law school. So exploring an MD, JD uh, experience. 
as only Savannah would do. She was the student that I was referring to that I wasn't sure when she slept because she was involved in so many different things on campus and in the library a lot. Um, and, you know, it's a, it's a great, as you're going to hear from the other students, I mean, you can probably find honor students involved in almost every club on campus, which speaks to the diversity of their interests and majors, um, and also to the fact that they really want to be solid members of the community. Uh, so we miss Savannah quite a bit, um, but excited to see where she's going to go after Emory. Next slide. Thank you. Take it away. Yep, so Savannah was a great example of a student who really got involved outside of the classroom, um, in addition to all of the academic things that she mentioned in the video. She also was involved in lots of different clubs on campus, um, doing research. She studied abroad, I believe, also. Um, so she was just doing lots of different things. But really, the point of honors is not for you to be holed up in the library with a book um, or, I mean, working hard studying, yes, but that should not be your only priority in the honors college. We really want you to be involved beyond the classroom. So these are just a couple of the ways that we offer opportunities for students to get involved beyond the classroom. Research is a big one. Every honor student does research at least during their senior year as part of a thesis project, which can look like a lot of different things, by the way. My thesis project involved comic books and Netflix. Um, so it doesn't always have to be in a lab, although there are lots of great projects that do that too. Um, and we have a close partnership with the Center for the Support of Undergraduate Research and Fellowships and the First Year Research Experience Program. So lots of honor students get involved in research from very early on. Cultural activities. This has taken a little bit of a break this year for obvious reasons, but hopefully in the fall we can resume these things full force. Uh, but honors will purchase tickets to different events around town, whether that's the symphony, whether that's theater productions, concerts, early gardens, uh, the aquarium, the Cape Fear Museum, um, and, and purchase blocks of tickets so that students can go explore these places together, get involved in the community, explore the city of Wilmington, and also bond. And that extends into our fall break and spring break trips that we've done the past couple of years, not this year, but hopefully again, resuming this fall and onward to Washington DC and Asheville, North Carolina. And if Washington DC or Asheville are not far enough away for you, we also have honors exclusive study abroad trips, right? So one thing you might know about UNC Wilmington is that we are huge on study abroad. We have over a thousand different study abroad programs at UNCW that can take you to more than 50 different countries. Um, and we also have, in addition to all those opportunities, honors exclusive study abroad trips, which are usually short term seven to 10 day trips and have gone to all of these locations listed here, plus more in the future. Um, hopefully Dr. Mel will take some students to Spain this coming year, super exciting. And then involvement. Um, first years are living together in Cornerstone Hall and building community together. You'll find honors mentors in all of our first year seminar classes to help you navigate that transition to college and point you into different resources and clubs. Uh, as Dr. Bingham mentioned, you'll find honor students in pretty much every student organization on this campus. And there are almost 300 student organizations on this campus. And more often than not, you're gonna find honor students on the leadership teams of those student organizations. Um, so there are lots of ways to build community. And also there's a lot of informal community building uh, Kelly will probably mention <laughs> toward the end of this session that uh, a friend she made in honors her freshman year is her current roommate, right? So they have stayed together all that time. Um, you have students who, uh, I think some of you were in Cornerstone when this was happening, um, but they put together something called C3 Kitchen and started making dinner for each other every other Friday night in Cornerstone. Um, and one time we in the office um, got involved in it and brought spaghetti and had a game night and it was so much fun. So the informal stuff is really important too. But yeah, lots of things to do outside the classroom at UNCW in general and just things we encourage you to do as honor students. I guess I'll jump in here quickly. Um, really one of the major aims is to create a community and um, Nikki mentioned Cornerstone, which is the picture in the upper left-hand corner. Um, in the middle is a picture of the Cameron Art Museum. And so this, is a, this was an event where um, we took uh, students, gosh, the first couple weeks of their freshman year here and went to the local art museum, which is free um, for freshmen at UNCW. 
we're now teaching a couple courses there, which we'll talk about later. And the picture in the right hand corner is a trip that we did in 2019 in the summer, made up mostly of freshmen, um, where freshmen showed up in London and they were met by me, also the director of undergraduate research and fellowships and the director of study abroad. Um, and we spent 10 days in London with them, focusing on a course that I teach uh, in the fall called consumer culture, which is kind of the flip side of a marketing class. And uh, as, a, as a faculty member, just a fantastic way to get to know students outside the classroom. And you know, you learn a lot of things about students beyond them as a student, um, about their interest and what they want to do and what their overall goals are, or that they're a really good singer or they're a bad singer or whatever the case may be. Um, so really, I mean, this is a, a fantastic example of uh, creating community. A lot of these students continue to hang out together in our roommates, and we are actually in the next couple of weeks and a half probably at London Reunion. Um, and I can write a recommendation letter about these students because I know them incredibly well, having spent time abroad with them. Um, so these are just a few examples of the ways that community created in addition to, to the great things that Nikki mentioned. So you are probably thinking, okay, all this sounds really good, but what is this going to mean for me as far as um, the two main concerns that we get from prospective students is how many more semesters am I gonna have to, to take in order to finish uh, graduate with my major and honors and our honors course is going to be just more busy work. So I'm gonna address briefly both of them. Um, when you do honors, actually, at the end of the day, you are only maybe having to take between eight and 11 additional hours that you would not have to take if you, were, if you were not doing honors. But those eight or 11 hours could count as your electives. And all of you, most of you are going to need electives so that you reach the amount of hours that you need to graduate um, uh, at UNCW. And the reason behind that uh, is that that many of the honors classes, honors credits they're going to take are going to count towards something else at the same point, at the same time. So for example, you all have to take several credits to satisfy what we call university studies, your general education requirements, intro, intro to psychology, intro to criminology, etc. Uh, you will take some of those classes as honors. So you are I said double dipping, right? So checking two boxes at the same time, honors requirements and general education requirements. Some honors credits would also count towards your major. So that's why at the end of the day, even though in paper we have 29 credits that you need for honors, at the end of the day it's really only between eight and 11 additional ones. Uh, as it has been said before, many of our students double major, have maybe one minor, two minors, and graduate with honors, and they don't have to add one more semester because those hours can be, those additional hours can be easily distributed along your four years here. The other concern or hesitation that prospective students usually have uh, is that I'm going to end up reading a lot more, writing a lot more assignments, so basically courses with uh, more busy work, and the reality is different. Uh, it's a different type of work. It's just a more challenging in a good way type of work. And I guess the assumption that we go from as, as uh, professors who teach honors uh, classes is that we assume that you honors students, you're inquisitive, you're curious, and you don't want to take another class where you're gonna have the instructor lecturing at you, having you take notes, and then have to memorize those and then be tested on it. You're gonna get enough of that in other classes. So what you get in honors classes, uh, to begin with, since they are capped at 20 or less, you're gonna get more opportunities for discussion and you're gonna get more opportunities to put your input and to interact also with the, with the faculty members. Um, also, because I'm gonna be teaching to 20 or usually less than 20 students, I'm gonna be able to implement assignments and implement uh, teaching strategies that I could not do in a class of 30, uh, 50 or more, right? So imagine taking your, again, intro to history or intro to psychology or intro to criminology. Um, you're gonna be able to do a lot more things that you would not be able to do in a class of 100 or more. And I'm just gonna give you the example of my own class, history, which is a university studies or general education class. What I do with honors students is first of all, I don't give you tests even less multiple choice tests. You're gonna have uh, take home essays and then you're gonna be working on some independent projects you present to the class. But more importantly, 
I'm going to have you discuss in class primary sources. So I'm going to spend a lot of time on you doing small readings and then all of us discussing them in class. Instead of me telling you what Christopher Columbus did and why he did it, you're going to be reading his own words and you're going to draw your own conclusions of what he did. Of course, that means that I cannot cover the rest of the material in class. So you'll be reading that in the textbook, but I'm going to test you on it, right? So at the end of the day, you're going to be doing more critical thinking uh, in these classes uh, rather than memorizing and again, having the class center around somebody who's lecturing at you. And then the third benefit of honors classes, even in general education classes, is that you're going to get more hands-on experience and more applied learning experiences beyond the classroom. For example, in a class honors class as intro to criminology, we have an instructor who has 30 years plus of experience in the prison system. So with 20 students or less, he can take you to a penitentiary in the area. Uh, or in a philosophy and religion class, you can go visit some religious centers and then back in the classroom discuss your experiences. In a class of 50 more students, right, we cannot do that. So those are things that you can expect in honors classes. And again, it's not more work, it's just a different type of work, certainly more challenging. Right, in a good way. Uh, Nikki, you can go ahead, please. And then we have honor seminars uh, that you cannot take, right, if you are not uh, in the honors college. And this is probably one of the most exciting, I mean, when it comes to curriculum, these are the courses that are probably the most exciting ones, right, because these are topics, uh, usually faculty teach these classes thinking about some dream topic or some dream class that they had been wanting to put together, but they cannot do it in the home departments because there is not a code for that class. So they come to honors and they can put it together. Uh, most of these classes are interdisciplinary. So you're gonna be approaching one topic from different angles, from different fields of study. Some of them are co-taught. So you're gonna have, for instance, uh, the class that is listed there, HIV and AIDS in culture. That class is taught by a professor in biology and a professor in, uh, in theater, but talking about the same topic, just from two different perspectives. Um, there is gonna be one next spring, so if you're here, you could take it, which is about science, philosophy, and religion. And it's taught by a professor in philosophy and religion and a nuclear engineer who works here at GE uh, locally. So you can all try to imagine how interesting that class uh, could be. Um, and even again, when they are not caught taught, the topics go beyond one discipline. So for instance, uh, this is one class listed here that I'm pretty, very proud of. It's the first time we're gonna be offering next spring. And um, even though I'm not a biology my major by any means, but I think biolo biology majors and other students might enjoy it. It's agar art, creating visual masterpieces with, thank you Nikki, with invisible microbes. And what you're gonna be doing there is actually in, how you call it, these plastic dishes, Petri dishes, I think they're called, you're gonna be cultivating bacteria. Um, you're gonna be learning about micro microbial uh, physiology, microbial genetics, but then you're also gonna have artists who are gonna be uh, guest speakers in the class. And at the end of the course, you're gonna be creating your own uh, pieces of art with living organisms. And then we have other classes like Ballhead Island, the class that you see there, maybe in the column uh, to the left. That class is a one credit class uh, on chemistry, biology, geological uh, processes in Ballhead Island, but then you spend spring break the whole week in Ballhead Island doing field work. Um, and I, I could go on and on the whole day, but, uh, oh, and extending science beyond research. That's a new class also that we have. For example, uh, you're gonna be creating a workshop for eighth graders and you're gonna be able, or you're gonna have to figure out a way to explain topics of science to an audience much different from what you're used to, right? Which develops a whole set of skills for you in the sense that you can be very good in your STEM field, but you're gonna have to always figure out how do you explain that to other people who don't know about your field, right? Um, and I will let Dr. Bingham later in another slide, he can talk about his own class, Connections, Art, Health and Community, which is also another signature course of, and that represents what we try to do in honors. But I think that can, that can come later in the PowerPoint. And, yep. Yeah, so again, emphasizing connections across campus, right? So when you come to UNCW, the point is not for you to be 
in some sort of insular little block of campus with other honor students. The point is to get all across this map, all across campus, doing all kinds of things. So up here is the living learning community for honor students. Um, the honors office, when we're in it, is in Randall Library here. But honor students are all over this campus uh, doing all kinds of different things, making connections with many different offices on campus. So a lot of the time we'll partner with different offices or promote their events, um, asking honor students to get involved in different things. The study abroad um, folks, we do a lot with the Center for the Support of Undergraduate Research, we do a lot with. We have a showcase of student research every year. We have lots of students down at the Center for Marine Science. Um, Office of Student Leadership and Engagement has a ton of different workshops that we love to promote students going to and occasionally sponsor students participating in. ETL um, has been renamed, it's the Office of Applied Learning, but lots of applied learning experiences. And then of course, our three amazing diversity centers at UNCW, the LGBTQA Resource Office, Centro Hispano, and the Upperman African American Cultural Center are great places that we love seeing students get involved with and love to promote their events. So really, you know, the point is not to come here and stay in one spot. The point is to come here, spread your wings, if you will excuse the cheesy Seahawk, you know, pun there. Um, but get all over this campus and do all kinds of things and get involved in all the things that make you happy and that you're really passionate about. All right, another um, example of community connections, and I think this was listed on Dr. Mel's previous slide, but um, the director of the Ballhead Island Conservancy teaches for us. Um, and when it's not a pandemic, takes students to Ballhead Island for spring break. And that's a course that looks not only at the ecology of the island, um, which is off the coast of North Carolina, um, but also the economics and the politics of the island. So another great example of um, interdisciplinary inquiry. Um, we have two courses now at the Cameron Art Museum that we'll probably have on rotation. Um, one is on health narratives, so writing and health. Uh, one is using art and, and a, the students learn a facilitation technique so they don't have, they don't need any background in art. Um, they're working with community members, um, veterans, people with PTSD, folks with early stage dementia, um, kids groups who have really low access to art and art museums. And, and art is used as a facilitation technique um, for our students to learn um, something that parents who are watching, uh, I'm a parent and my kids need to learn and that is radical listening, uh, how to listen to someone and really um, articulate back to them what they're saying in a different way and affirm what they're saying. And so it's a really different way of experiencing art. A lot of the students that take this course want to go into healthcare professions, although any student in honors can take the course that looks at the connection between art, science, and mental health. And uh, we'll have folks in the class each week who are either professional artists, and uh, we had an art therapist a couple weeks ago. Last week, we had uh, a world-renowned um, brain scientist who studies Alzheimer's and, and also happens to be married to an artist. So he looks at the connection between art and the brain. Um, and then we have organizations that reach out to us um, for interns. And so more recently, it's been Northwestern Mutual and the local regional president of Northwestern Mutual is a UNCW grad, not in business, but in history. Um, and they're looking for students with a liberal arts background because they're critical thinkers and they know they can communicate. Um, so just a range of, of, of really high touch and unique courses that um, are only offered through honors. All right, uh, this is my sort of my last um, pitch, I suppose, and that is everything really um, around honors starts with conversation. Uh, so whether that's uh, the high level of, of accessibility that we try to provide here, um, or the way the classes, as Dr. Mal mentioned, uh, function, or Nikki, who has a fantastic story about being a prospective student here as a high schooler and, and calling around to different universities in the state and who called her back, the director of creative writing at UNCW. Um, everything begins with conversation. Uh, I was on, I had a meeting today that I mentioned about food and chemistry and, and that began as sort of a random conversation with Dr. Mel and I and a faculty member in chemistry over coffee at a local coffee house where we just sort of threw out and planted these seeds and now it's blooming into an entire course and a grant proposal 
um, and all of that stuff. Some of the best thesis projects that I've been engaged with began over informal conversation over coffee. Um, that's really what honors is all about. And that's why we cap the classes and we want uh, small interactions. This is like you have some real examples of where some of our recent graduates have ended up at. And in the column of employment, you'll see it's quite diverse as far as museum settings or business companies, FBI, teaching positions, etc. cetera. Um, what you have to think about is when you graduate with honors, you're gonna have much more than what other students might have. Other students will have your same major, uh, similar transcript, and maybe the same GPA. But if you have honors, you have you are showing that you wanted to go beyond. You're going to show that you are curious, that you have wider interests, at the very least that you have research skills because you'll have to have finished a research project, that you're able to work independently uh, with little supervision. So those are all added skills that employers can see if you see the honors distinction there. But more than anything, again, something that is going to make a distinction between somebody with your same field of study and your same GPA. And then if you're thinking about grad school, certainly honors is a very, very uh, convenient path because applications for grad school are gonna be looking for any undergrad research experience that you have. And that's primarily, well, not primarily, but it's one of the uh, main things you will obtain uh, after graduating with honors. And Nikki, you can move on. I think we're almost at the end. Yeah, that was um, the last main slide before we move on to a Q&A portion. And I will put this slide back up toward the end, but just wanted to let you know that the three of us are more than happy to, to answer questions at any point. If you wanna email us, so our emails are up there. You can also set up a virtual or in-person visit um, on our website. We have been doing socially distanced small meetings with families. We still can't really go in the buildings with students who don't currently attend the NCW, um, but we can definitely sit down if you come to campus and just talk about what your future might look like here. And then of course, uh, the social media, just because that's a fun way to connect to and keep up. But with that, I'm going to close down my screen sharing. Um, and I believe that Chris has joined us. Um, I'm going to pick on Chris Canny, if he's here. Yes, he is. Hi, Chris. Um, so hey, Pat and Kelly introduced themselves a little bit earlier. Do you mind telling us a little bit about you and your year and major and different things that you're involved in before we start the Q&A? Can you hear me right now? Okay, perfect. Um, did you want to hear about my first year or my year right now, or do you want the whole thing? I, I can give you just the best bits. Chris, do you have your own chauffeur? Are you in a limousine or where are we coming I from? wish that were the case. Um, I'm just tremendously busy in all the best ways. Honors help me, help me be there. Um, no, I'm just involved, that's all. So looking back my first year at UNCW, man, it feels like there was like a whole life lived um, in just that time. So it's funny to, to pick out anything. Um, I was in Centro Hispano, then I was out of Centro Hispano. I joined ACE, which is the Association for On Campus Entertainment, which is behind um, a lot of some of the most fun stuff on campus, like movie screenings and stuff like that. Um, I lived in Cornerstone, made all my friends there. It's just so much, like we could be here forever, um, but Can't there was an opportunity every corner and then. <laughs> oh, right, so right now I'm studying public health and Spanish and I'm hopefully gonna become a physician assistant who can speak Spanish. That is the goal. Awesome. Does anybody have any specific questions? Because looking back at everything that's happened, it's incredible to try and pick something out. Yeah, I mean, that's great. If, if anybody in the audience has some questions they want to put in the chat right now, we can open it up to our panelists. Um, so we have Chris, Kat, and Kelly here. Um, awesome. A question about scholarships. Uh, we actually have not sent out any, uh, well, there were some, but most of our scholarship notifications have not actually been awarded yet. Um, we're hoping to start some of that next week and to have most notifications out by the end of March through your UNCW email inbox. So make sure you're checking your UNCW inbox. But thank you for that question, Chris. Um, all right, question for the panelists. Is the work overwhelming? Will we have plenty of time to build social relationships outside of class and work? 
Um, well, as I mentioned earlier, I have a part-time job, which honestly, with the amount of hours I work, I'm pretty much full-time. Um, I didn't mention this earlier either, but I said I was involved in some clubs. I'm involved in yoga club, um, UNCW CrossFit, um, POP, which is plastic o or plastic ocean project. Yeah, plastic ocean project. I'm, I've been up for a while, so I'm a little tired. Um, and then also surf rider and surf club as well. So I'm involved in a lot of things and those aren't all necessarily like academic related things. Um, so you're a thousand percent going to have time outside of school and outside of um, your classes to meet other people. Um, I mentioned in the comments earlier that three of my roommates or three of my best friends are from the honors college, but actually majority of them aren't. So you're definitely going to have opportunities to meet other people um, and hang out with other people and enjoy just being a UNCW student in total. So, yeah. Yeah, I would also say like you definitely have time to do things outside of school. Like I've had multiple jobs. I've pretty much every single fall I've held two jobs um, in term, and also like been super involved in research, doing classes. It definitely is kind of a like you make it what you want it to be. Like a lot of people who come in as early college students and are really raring and like ready to get out in two years, like you are probably going to be taking a heavier course load um, just because adjusting to college can be kind of difficult. But also Dr. Bingham will probably chime in and tell you to take your time because I think he has some personal experience with that. Um, so like it, the night that is the nice thing about college is like you decide how many courses that you take, but I have taken a full course load, which is 18 credit hours and like still had time to balance extracurriculars. You definitely have some late nights in the library, but the nice thing is that there's a whole nother honors community that like hangs out in the library, like pretty much after hours that you get to know really well too. Um, so you can kind of take study breaks and go chat with people. So it's a, it's a good balance of it all. Here, if I could just chime in too, I think it's kind of already been covered well, but in my experience, academic involvement was social involvement, especially in the honors college, where you kind of just stumble upon interest groups and common interests, especially in honors housing, where that develops into social opportunities. Awesome. Thank you, all of you. We have some more questions that we'll go through. Um, Skylar's asking if it's required to live in honors housing if you're in the honors college. Yes, for the first year, um, all honors students do live in Cornerstone Hall with three exceptions. One exception is if you're a student athlete, you're gonna live with your team, not in honors housing. Um, another exception is if you have medical issue or disability or some other reason um, that we can't accommodate in Cornerstone Hall, absolutely we can make accommodations there and you can live somewhere else. And the third exception is if you live in Wilmington or one of the neighboring counties and you're gonna live at home for your first year, you don't, I mean, you're gonna be living at home, right? So you're exempt from the on-campus living requirements and you don't have to live in Cornerstone. Um, but I know that uh, some people have specific housing that they wanna live in um, and maybe Cornerstone is not your first choice, but for those of you who did live in honors housing your freshman year, could you maybe uh, talk a little bit, I don't know, maybe you were really dreading it and it turned out differently or just, I don't know, but what did you think about living in Cornerstone or honors house if you were Kelly? Yeah. I was gonna say I loved it. I mean, I kind of like Kat said, I ended up finding my best friends there. I literally still live with one of them who was on my hall. Um, and then I lived in a six person apartment on campus the second, my like second semester with literally all people who I'd met in honors house. Um, it's definitely like not terrible. Like I feel like group living nowadays, like people get so scared about it and like really want the sweet, um, the sweet life, quote unquote, haha. -ha. Um, but uh, I would just, I don't know. I really loved communal living. I always like to say like, I loved getting to chat with people over brushing our teeth. Like, so I had entire friend groups that were just built or friendships that were built on the fact that we like both brush our teeth at like 10 PM. Um, so it's definitely like a different type of like experience than you would get I think if you were just like in a suite and then also like you do get to bond a little bit over stuff like your 110 classes which you have to take as a freshman and like you get to know people that you just are gonna be in classes with like honor specific classes and other classes be in research opportunities with be in organizations with I think it's it's a good way to make a somewhat larger school feel a lot smaller especially if you're kind of uncomfortable with like going into college. All right, I was telling my roommates to be quiet because they're watching Game of Thrones very enthusiastically right now. But um, I 
was really scared about honors housing at first as well. I was like, didn't really know anyone in the honors college. Um, but like Kelly mentioned, I met a lot of people really easily. Um, you're also mostly on like the same schedule as everyone else in the honors college, as far as like homework times and like when you're eating and stuff. So like, I'd like see someone in the hall and be like, hey, like, are you going to the dining hall? Like, let's go eat together. Or like there was a bunch of group, there was like a group of girls that always shower at the same time as me. So we'd like coordinate like who was bringing the music to the shower or something like random like that. Um, it's also, I don't know what it is, but I think honors kids tend to be a little bit cleaner. I don't know, maybe that was just my experience on my hall, but my bathroom compared to some of my friends who didn't live in Cornerstone was definitely a lot nicer, so. I think what I was most nervous about and what most freshmen are nervous about is getting stuck with a roommate who is nuts or totally different from you in every way or just has opposite hours of work than you or wants to party all night or vice versa. Um, and I think a lot of people find it is easier than you think to, to find the middle ground. And then if you're the type of person who has trouble with that, um, then there are people there to help you, which is it's kind of funny for me to say because now I'm an RA and that's um, sort of my job is to help people through those, those roommate conflicts. But that was what I was most worried about and I really didn't have anything to worry about um, because I felt supported. I'm going to chime in here too also because I'll get calls from time to time about a student who wants to live with you know a junior high or high school friend or even a childhood friend um, and so I, there's several things to say there if you're one of those uh, one is encourage that person to apply to honors um, and two you know unless you have some um, absolute obsession with you know sleeping in the bunk bed above that person, you can spend all the time you want with them without actually being in a room where you're falling asleep at the same time. Uh, there's no reason that you can't hang out with friends that come to UNCW. Um, I would say, and I don't wanna sound like an old man by saying this, but think about you know the college experience as part, part of it is expanding your social circles and meeting new people and also learning to get along with new people and appreciate uh, their differences. So um, they're, all the benefits that these folks mentioned are there um, for honors. I will tell you about my own experience. I love baseball, but I was put in the midst of the baseball team as a freshman. And uh, you know, I'm a still, still a baseball fan, but this did not go well. Um, as I tell everyone, I, couldn't, I could barely sleep in the room. I certainly couldn't study in. And so being around, honor students work hard, play hard for sure, but being around other students who, you know, uh, I think almost all of them hopefully are really serious about their studies, um, that should help you. And take my example as one where it was not so productive um, to be in that environment. Um, so, you know, for those of you who are really wedded tightly to living with a friend, um, think about the overall goals and aims of going to college and what that's about. Because you will, you will expand your circles. Um, and, you know, who you, if you're the same person at 22 that you were at 18, we have failed you. Um, you need to be developing and broadening your circles and um, becoming a different person. Yeah, I will say like my best friend also got into the honors college and lived in honors and we actually chose to not live together. So kind of to answer Sarah M's question about connecting with potential roommates, I went completely random and I love my roommate. Literally the only conflict that we ever had was like, like food like got left out for like a couple days one time. And it that's a weird thing for me. And like, it was fine. Um, I know people who found their roommates through either Facebook groups or Instagram groups. Like that's, I think Instagram is more kind of the thing now, but and back when I was a uh, freshman, and it was Facebook. Um, so I know people who found it and it worked out super, super well. I know people who found them and they no longer speak with the roommate that they found. So it really is like kind of a toss up. Um, I didn't ever, I don't think I knew anyone who like had to like change roommates because of something terrible. Um, I think I knew maybe two girls who switched rooms just because they like got along better with somebody else's roommate. But like it's not like you're not, I don't think you're ever going to get to put into like this horrific situation where like you feel like unsafe 
Um, and like uh, Chris said, like there are RAs to help you with that. I feel like that is an issue that you're having. So like, I don't know, I don't advocate for going, um, for going random, but like sometimes it's better if you're friendly with your roommate and not best friends with them. Um, meaning that you can kind of come together, spend time together in your room, like have some good memories, but like you're not with them every single second of the day, um, just because you don't want to get tired with each other. And like, as you guys probably know now, like being in quarantine, stuck in your houses with your family, sometimes seeing people that even you really, really love all the time, not the funnest thing in the world. So definitely seconded to Dr. Bingham talking about considering people other than those that like you already know or like feel super comfortable with. I forgot to mention this too, but I was actually, so Cornerstone has some three person rooms as well. Um, so I had like a friend of a friend who was in the honors college that I maybe had spoken to like once in my entire life. And we ended up um, putting each other down as roommates. And then we found out we had a third random roommate. So I knew one, like kind of knowing one of my roommates and then I didn't meet my other roommate until we literally walked into Cornerstone on move-in day. And I was like, hey, I'm your roommate. And she was like, hey. And now all three of us are still like best friends. So like Kelly was saying, it's really a toss up. Um, honestly, if you are a good roommate, I feel like the other people will reciprocate as well. Um, and there'll be more than plenty of time to like set up room boundaries and that kind of stuff as well. And the RAs are really, really good about like meeting with you guys and like talking through different stuff as well if there were to be like some sort of issue or conflict or like disagreement kind of thing. Yeah, thank you all for answering a couple questions there. Just uh, a couple logistical questions that I wanna get out of the way and there's another good one from panelists. Cornerstone is for honor students unless we don't fill it up. Um, there are about 250 beds in Cornerstone and I think that this year we will fill it up. So um, although, I don't know, technically, yes, there is an opportunity for non-honor students to live in Cornerstone. This year, I think it'll be full, so I wouldn't necessarily count on that. Um, and as far as hearing back, um, if you were an early action applicant to UNCW, you should have heard back about the Honors College by now. If you were a regular decision, uh, student. We're trying to get those decisions out by the end of March. When our roommates picked, that is actually through the housing office, housing and residence life. Um, so it has to do with, you know, the housing application you send in, but I believe it's May or June when you get your roommate assignments. Um, definitely not before May. You can change it after that though too. Mm -hmm. Yep, you can also um, change that. Yeah, and also, yep, Dr. Bingham brought up an important point. Although we have honors housing, technically it's run by the office of housing. So they are a great resource for specific housing questions also. But I wanted to turn it back a little bit to the experience questions with students. Somebody asked, are there more connections to research and internships through the Honors College? Um, so maybe our panelists, if you've had any experiences, you know, getting connected to things through Honors, you can share that. Or I know several of you have had internships that you sort of found on your own too. I will say that we make a really big effort to promote different opportunities that get sent to us through honors. We have a newsletter that goes out every other week. And I swear I have an internship or some sort of paid opportunity or a research opportunity in there every single time that students can apply for. Um, and then we also sometimes have organizations reach out specifically to us as honors and say, we want honor students to apply to this. So Northwestern Mutual is a good one. There's a lawyer's office that asks us every year to help find them interns and just different opportunities pop up like that. But panelists, do you have any thoughts on this internships and research opportunities through honors or otherwise? I don't wanna say yes to like poop on the non-honors people, but like, yes, <laughs> in a sense. Um, I definitely don't think I would even know where to start if I wasn't an honors student, just because of how helpful they are with like connecting you to people in your major and connecting you to people in the community as well. Um, I had an internship with Dr. Bingham last semester, like I mentioned previously. Um, so that was something super cool that I probably wouldn't have gotten the opportunity to do if I wasn't in the Honors College, because I probably would have never met Dr. Bingham. Um, and my roommate actually, who's not in the Honors College, she like was looking for an internship this semester and didn't even know where to start. So I had to help her just from knowledge I had from the Honors College to try to find something that would work for her um, and even like where to start sending those emails at. So yes, I might be a little bit biased just because I've had really good internship opportunities, um, but I would say so. Yeah, I mean, there's literally a built-in research opportunity with your thesis. Like, I don't think you can like 
get much better than that. Um, so you work with a professor for your full, it's either year and a half or like final year. Um, I guess you can do it at any point, but typically people do them their senior year um, and you can do it for either two or three semesters. And I know like specifically for if any of y'all are like STEM students, so bio, marine biology, chemistry, all that good stuff, like a lot of professors will put honor students in their lab over non-honor students because they recognize that you probably will end up working with them on a larger project later on. Um, that's not to say I feel like I, honors was very STEM heavy when I got in and I didn't really feel like I was 100% supported. That's changed a lot thanks to um, the wonderful people sitting here. We had a completely different leadership when I first got in. Um, but being an honor student definitely helped me like in the liberal arts and humanities as well. Like I felt a lot more confident going up to teachers. I felt like I had a support system um, for with Nikki and with Dr. Bingham and Dr. Mel um, for like being just being like, okay, what do I even do? Like I definitely have had conversations with all of them about like, I really know what I'm doing here with my thesis um and so it's that like I think the thesis project is a big thing that kind of a lot of times serves as like a culmination for your research so I know I built I built my thesis off of a lot of like an internship and like a DIS which is a direct independent study so like basically a one semester class that you design um, with a professor in your major um, so a lot of people do that with their lab work and stuff like that so there definitely are a lot of research opportunities and also just like I think honors is a little bit of a confidence boost when you can like open your email with like I'm an honors student at UNCW it just already like kind of shows a level of dedication I guess that like goes over well with a lot of professors and staff here I think. This is another little random thing that I thought of that um, so I was having my advisor meeting last week just to talk about classes and stuff for the fall. Um, and we were talking about like med school stuff too. And he was saying that one of the med schools that I'm looking at, you have to have a specific recommendation from your chem like 101 or 102 teacher. And I'm thinking like, oh, like this will be fine. I took honors chem 101 and 102. And there was like 20 kids in my class. My professor loved me, knew my name. Like we've had coffee before, all that good stuff. So I was like, oh, I'm not worried about this. But then I was thinking about kids at other schools that are like bigger and have like 200 or 300 student chem 101 or 102 classes. I'm like, how would they even be able to get that recommendation? I'm sure their teacher doesn't know their name, probably might not recognize their face. Um, so just adding on to like the smaller class size stuff as well, I feel like you have more opportunities to connect with your teachers and your mentors as well. Um, which you never know when that's going to be helpful, like you might need it for a med school recommendation, or you might get a job opportunity through them. So just little connections that you make in the honors college as well are super helpful and have definitely been beneficial to my success um, in college as well. So Awesome. Thank you all for those insights. Uh, let me see. What else do we have here? Kelly talked a little bit about connecting with roommates. Um, would it be harder to adjust to the honors college as a transfer student? It's a great question, Vivian. Um, admittedly, a majority of our students do come in as first year freshmen. We do have students come in after their first semester freshman year and we have some transfers come in. We do hold specific orientation sessions for our transfer students and current students who are admitted and try to get you into those classes as soon as possible. Um, but you are usually not living in honors housing. Um, so getting to be part of those different social events that we hold and other events that we do is really critical for transfer students. Um, and also just keeping in touch with the three of us staff members and your advisor. Um, but we have had lots of transfer students have a really great time and get a lot out of honors, the honors experience. I think for all students, it kind of, you get out what you put into it. Um, so if you're willing to put yourself on a limb, go to the events, talk to the professor, you're gonna get a lot out of it. Um, but if you have more questions about that, feel free to send us an email and we can answer your more detailed questions. Um, we have a couple of questions about study abroad, how soon you can study abroad or if it's um, required for honor students, which it's not. But I know Kelly, uh, you did study abroad if you wanted to touch a little bit on that. Yeah, I love study. I love doing study abroad. I had the greatest time. I actually studied abroad in spring, spring 2020. That sounds right. Um, yes, uh, right when the pandemic hit. So that was really great. I just had my anniversary of um, getting uh, 
expelled from the country. I studied abroad in Peru. Um, so it was really fun trying to get back home. Um, but UNCW was really supportive the whole time. Um, I'm pretty sure you literally can defer, like I'm almost certain that there is a study abroad program where you can come in, you can study abroad like and go through UNCW for your very first semester and then you come back for your second. So like literally like before you're even a student here technically. And then I know Camille, who's a student ambassador with me, um, went on the study abroad trip with Dr. Bingham to London before she was even a freshman. So like she came in and like knew him super well, knew a bunch of the honor students really well. Um, so you definitely like, you can study abroad and like have those experiences and get to know UNCW people like before you even like step foot on campus. Um, I definitely would recommend it for everyone. It's, um, it's super, super great. They have so many countries, they have so many programs. There's like literally like over 3000 of them. Um, they can apply to your major. So I'm a Spanish minor. A lot of mine kind of went, a lot of my classes went towards that, but also there's like, there's, um, I do, they do like a yoga spring break trip to like Costa Rica and stuff. And then also like all the way up to, um, like two year programs through the business school, if you're interested in international business. So it's really flexible. They're really great honors specifically is really great about giving you a lot of money when you study abroad, which is really nice. Um, they kind of help you, uh, fund those plane tickets and stuff like that. So I definitely would recommend for anybody who's like even slightly interested, like definitely check with the study abroad office. Um, I'm happy to answer more questions about it. If you wanted to message me directly, um, but definitely at least consider it, if not like actively try to do it. It's a big part of the culture at UNCW um, and for a really good reason. We had a question, what are the interdisciplinary seminars like, which uh, Dr. Bingham had a note about just the different topics that rotate, but could some of you talk maybe about some of the honor seminars that you've taken 120s or 210s or any of those? Um, all of mine that I've taken have been very interesting. Um, so I mentioned earlier, the one I'm taking right now is a conspiracy class. And my professor is a little bit of a nut, but like in a good way. Um, Dr. Bollinger, if anybody knows who he is, um, he is like the weirdest person ever, but will make you laugh very much. Um, we just talk about some crazy stuff, some of the stuff like I haven't even heard of, and then a lot of the very, I mean, popular conspiracies like 9-11. Um, and what's another one we just did recently? Um, what do you Q say? Right. He talks about Q&A. Yeah. Yes, that's what we're about to start doing. Um, so just like random stuff like that, which has absolutely nothing to do with my majors um, or, any of my field trajectory trajectories that I'm interested in. Um, but it's just something kind of fun that I can take on the side. It's almost kind of like a break from the rest of the stuff that I'm doing. Um, and it's fun for me. I took one last year, or no, not last year, last semester that was um, Journey to America for like Latinx something. I can't remember the name of it, but it was about um, immigration to the United States, which was also super important to me because my family immigrated to the United States. Um, and that was super well taught. I loved that, that class and the readings that came with that class. So there's literally topics for everything. And I'm sure you'll find something that's cool. It doesn't necessarily have to go with what you're studying, but that's kind of the fun of it. Um, Cause it's like, a little hobby that you can do and also get credit for <laughs> at the same time. Yeah, I really liked all of mine. I was trying to go back through because I was like, honestly, my classes have started to blur after four years. So I was literally just looking up, I was like, which honors classes was I in? Um, but I've always loved my, especially 110 or not 110s, 120s, sorry, honors mentors brain. Um, but 120s are like my personal favorites. They're just like, like little one credit hour classes. Um, so I took one where we got to go back through like a bunch of the archives, like from North Carolina and also like um, from UNCW because we worked with uh, the one of the guys who works over in Randall Library and it was just really cool to read these like all these old Seahawk articles which is our like student newspaper on campus um, so it was super cool to go through that and then like he had boxes of stuff from like the Wilmington um, like city council that we got to go through so that was also really fun um, and then I did one where I was like got to go out in the community and tutor someone um, tutor like with a family um, in Spanish. And so that was a really great way to like do a little bit of community service. I got to do it with one of my really good friends. So we got to go like every Thursday, I think it was, um, and hang out with these like 
two kids and like help them read and like do their homework. And it was just like, it was a really cool way to like work on my language um, in like my speaking sp skills while also like having um, like credit and also community service combined into it. Thanks y'all. I think that we may have lost Chris <laughs> in his car wherever he was, but if he comes back, he can chime in. Um, let's see. Nikki, I've got a, I got to jump off. So I just want to say yeah. a quick thing and then I'll get out of everybody's hair. Um, one is thank you all for joining us. You can see for meeting these students that, um, I mean, I think I'll speak for Dr. Mel, the only time I will. Um, our job is absolutely amazing and working with these students is very humbling. Uh, they're all doing amazing things here and they're gonna go on and do amazing things and we absolutely love it. We try to be as accessible as possible. So as Nikki said, come visit, um, whether that's online or you wanna have a socially distanced coffee outside and we'll walk around campus, certainly willing to do that. Um, and the last thing very quickly is wherever you're looking, think about how the people there make you feel. Do you feel like you belong? Do you feel like you'll have access to these people? Are they looking out for you? Are they gonna support you? versus going to visit a campus where there's a lot of finger wagging and they're saying, you don't know how lucky you are to be here. I, I went to places like that and it just doesn't feel good. Um, so no, no place is the right place for everybody, but really be honest with yourself about where you feel like you belong and where you feel like, you know, is this my group of people? Um, do I feel like these folks are looking out for me? Cause that go with that feeling, that's a real thing. And you need to be honest with, with the place that makes you feel that way. I'm gonna go pick up my daughter now. Good to see you all. Bye, Dr. Bingham. Um, we have a little bit of time left. If anybody has additional questions, you can feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, or if I missed your question further up in the chat or you want a more detailed answer to something, um, we can definitely do that. Um, let's see. While I'm saying a uh, last call for questions to be answered by panels and staff, um, Kat and Kelly, can you maybe tell us like one of your favorite memories or things that you got to do with, I mean, it could be with honors or just generally at UNCW. Kat, you want to go first, Kelly? Do you want me to go first? No, oh, you go ahead. I'm like literally blanking on every memory. Sorry. I, I've been working my thesis all day. So like my brain is really not here. <laughs> Um, well, I have a lot of favorite college memories. If I had to choose one specifically related to the Honors College, it was definitely the DC trip we took last fall over fall break. Um, I had never been to DC before. I don't know why I've never been to DC before that because it was awesome. Um, but we got to do and like see a bunch of cool stuff for very, very, very cheap, like much cheaper than it would have been um for me to just like go by myself or with some friends and I'm a very cost effective person so that was <laughs> extremely nice um I went by myself I didn't know anybody besides Dr. Bingham and Nikki um so I got to make a lot of new friends and it was super cool to just see everything in DC and just get closer with other honor students as well um and that was done over fall break last year yep in my freshman year and it was super, super fun. So that was definitely one of my favorite memories that I have with the Honors College. And that was that trip was only open to honor students. So like only honor students went on this trip. And also, no, it was just honor students, I think. Yeah, I think it was just honor students. I think looking back, I probably, it's just this like small collection of like memories, especially around like honors housing and like just with my honors friends, like anything from like, I mean, like I met up with an honor student like one night, like super late on a Sunday in the library and like we ate a pizza together or like, um, you know, like watching, I have a very specific memory of like watching a Hannah Montana movie, like while piled into my friend's dorm room or like watching the Super Bowl all together. I just think it was like a lot of those little community things where like, I think from the first day that like I got into honors and like got into honors housing, like I was just like immediately comfortable. Um, and I immediately like felt like I have friends. Like I remember looking back on Snapchat memories from like me and my friends hanging out. We were like, we were way too comfortable with each other considering the fact that we were like complete strangers. Um, and so I think that like a lot of that is just like what I remember and like crazy, like 
I don't know, class related stuff where you'd like get up and play games. And it's just, it's stuff that you don't normally get in like a standard lecture um, as a senior and like getting like close to graduation and doing all this reminiscing. I think like those times stick out a lot more to me than like the papers I wrote or like, you know, like the specific assignments I did. Um, so that's definitely, I think what I would say. And just as putting on my former student hat for a second, um, I did not graduate that long ago. <laughs> so it's still fairly recent that we got to do some fun things, but I had so many things through the honors college and my college experience that just completely changed my experience and I would never have had otherwise. Um, I got to present research at San Diego Comic-Con. I got to go to Iceland through a study abroad trip. Um, we had a spring break trip to Asheville with honors, um, which, was just a really wonderful experience. I met my all time best friend for life in an honors English class my freshman year, um, who now teaches for honors. He's teaching honors classes uh, after completing his master's degree at UNCW. So just, I mean, really to echo Kat and Kelly, um, this is a special place. Um, and, you know, we are so excited to get to know all of you um, and to welcome our next class of incoming first year students. But, I think that is a good place to end. Oh, um, one last question. Is there additional advising available in the Honors College for students who are undecided? Actually, all students at UNCW technically come in as undecided. You don't declare a major until the end of your freshman year. So definitely we have advising available for students to help you sort of get guided in those directions and choose what major that you might wanna have. But definitely no problem with being undecided. We have lots of students who come in that way. Um, and there was one brand new one of scholarships attached to the honors college specifically. Yep, we, we do have um, specific exclusive honors college scholarships, but the way we award those is mainly through the general UNCW scholarship application. So if you already filled out the UNCW scholarship application, you're good to go. Um, and if not, just look that up on the website and you can still fill it out, I think, but. Um, I wanted to end on like the really happy, like heartwarming note, but I wanted to get those questions answered too. Um, I'm going to put up also um, the email addresses again. So if you have any questions that you didn't get answered, or if you want to talk more one on one with one of the staff members, you definitely can. Um, Kat was really kind and put her email address in the chat. So if you want to get the real, true, unfiltered <laughs> opinions of the Honors College, you can email her and ask all of your questions that maybe you didn't want to ask in um, a big audience. But otherwise, thank you all so much for coming. We, I really, I wish we could see you in person. That's how we're used to doing these things, but hopefully we'll be able to soon um, for those of you who end up coming to UNCW. But have a great weekend. Thank you for spending your Friday afternoons with us um, and stay safe.